Okay, which is recording. So I'd like to introduce you to our speaker for right now. Her name is Marlies de Opelima. She did uh, tell me how to produce, how to pronounce that in the correct way, but I know that I would butcher it. So I'm rather than um, attempting it, I'm just going to say that um, uh, welcome and uh, thank you for being here. She's a midwifery professor at the University of San Paulo School in the Humanities, Arts, uh, Science, and Midwifery course in Brazil. She's also a researcher on human, on, sorry, on women's health and quality of life, midwifery care, and depressive symptoms in pregnancy. Prior to her position at the university, she taught and coordinated the School of Nursing at the Adventist University of Sao Paulo. She completed her basic nursing degree from the University of Sao Paulo, post, uh, postgraduate degree as a nursing midwife from the University of Santo Camillo, I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, and a master's in a doctoral program from the University of San Paulo. So welcome, um, Marlies, and um, I look forward to hearing the rest of the presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Megan, for introducing me. First of all, I'm glad to be here. It's an honor to participate in this virtual International Day of the Midwife 2017 and to have the opportunity to share this project with you midwives around the world. The project Upskilling Midwifery Education in four countries in Africa is founded by an organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries Fund for International Development, OFID, and it is a partnership between the World Health Organization, the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Department of Health Ministries, and Loma Linda University. We all know that maternal mortality rates around the world are very different, and in some countries it remains a challenge to be faced by the governments. It can be said that maternal mortality rates show how valid a woman is in her society. So, high maternal mortality continues to be a problem in many countries in sub-Saharan Africa. WHO, concerned about this problem, established with the country's members Sustainable Development Goal 3.1 which aims to reduce maternal mortality ratio below 270 by 2030. In order to reach this goal, WHO decided to partner with the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Department of Health Ministries that globally has more than 70 schools of nursing and midwifery. So, as to improve quality of midwifery education in these countries, the established goal was to upscale midwifery education by facilitating the implementation of WHO midwifery educator core competencies by midwifery educators. To reach this objective, laboratories of change were developed to provide an environment for embracing innovations, new ideas, promoting changes in attitudes. We are assuming that the establishment of laboratories of change in these countries will transform midwifery educators by improving their knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Ethical, competent, and confident midwives can improve the health and well-being of women and girls across the lifespan. The project donor chose four countries to take part in this initi initiative, Botswana, Lesotho, Malawi, and Cameroon. We are using as a theoretical framework the change theory by Kurt Lewin, which presents to us three cycle phases 
as you may see at the slide. Phase one, unfreezing, make people aware of the need of change. We started by doing a capacity assessment of the midwifery educators from specific schools of these four countries. And then we explain the project and the WHO core competencies. After that, the consultants and the educators get together doing a gap analysis and came out with the development of action plans with timelines. Phase two, moving to present innovations, the new approach. We introduced the theoretical foundations of competence-based education and active methods of learning through seminars. And now we are in phase three, refreezing, which means incorporate these innovations on a daily basis through implementation and assessment of competence-based education. Also, demonstration by the midwifery educators, the WHO core competencies, and enhanced collaboration between them, focus on values. These slides show us the dates of all the steps we have been through since December 2014 and go on until March 2017, when we were able to do the capacity assessment in Cameroon. We started the capacity assessment before in the other three countries. So it's a little bit different from the, what you may see here from Cameroon, December 2016. Actually, the data was March 2017. The project will continue until 2019. We work in collaboration with international regional and country-based WHO leaders. WHO collaboration centers established at universities of these countries with ministries of health and nurse and midwifery council leaders who are all engaged in facilitating change in the knowledge, skills, and attitudes of the midwifery educators. Assessment of sustainability and accountability will be examined through indicators jointly developed by participants and consultants and by the ability to, one, integrate midwifery educator core competencies into their teaching, and two, incorporate competence-based education concepts into their curriculum. The outcomes will be change in the knowledge, skills, and attitudes of midwifery educators that will be assessed using the WHO midwifery educator core competency gap analysis tool at the end of the project. The WHO Midwifery Educator Core Competency has 19 domains that we have to go through it and to show um, how they are confident, how they are competent in all these core competencies. The outcomes, by doing that, we hope to make a difference through midwifery education and decrease the maternal mortality rate in these countries. These are the direct participants of this project 
and you may see a picture of them in the next slide. Some of them from Loma Linda University are here with us, and they will help me answer any questions you may have. Some of them, like Dr. Patricia Johns, are from Loma Linda University. Wansa and Kawani are from WHO. Uh, Jennifer Nayoni is from WHO Office, um, Africa Office. And some of the others are participants at this project from the school, from the an international cons consultant also. Here you may see the picture from the, the part of the group. The majority of them are here. We want to say thank you you to OFID once again for funding this project. And thanks to all of you who is attending this presentation. I know uh, we have more time for some questions and I want to open this uh, time for any question that may you have. And thank you again, Megan, for introduce me to this presentation. Wonderful, thank you. This sounds like such an enormous project. I think the slide for me that really hit home was the one where you had all the dates on it and it was like, wow, this is, um, this is a lot of work here. And I know that Dr. Pat Jones is um, here and able to answer questions as well, so um, I will leave it over for, for you guys to um, uh, to negotiate the questions that are coming in, but let me know if you want me to help in any way. I think for me, one of the things that, that it brought up was, what was one of the hardest parts in, in doing all this? Like, what were some of the things that came up that you were surprised that were difficult, you weren't expecting, or even that you were expecting and, and that that was a, one of the struggles. Well, well, for me, uh, the most challenging uh, thing was to put all these people together and to have our meeting and to try to speak the same language for the whole project. Uh, I mean, it's a um, it's a big challenge because they they want to work in a competence based uh, way, in a competence based education way, but they don't know really what it is about or how to really use this in um, in the teaching. So uh, working with them about uh, this is uh, uh, really challenging for us. Also because we are working in a different countries with uh, different cultures and different uh, realities, although they are all in the same continent, uh, African continent but uh, there is some differences between them. For instance, in Botswana, it is, um, they, they, they are more developed than the other countries. So they have more, um, more support for doing these changes. But in Malawi, they face huge problems uh, to, use these new ideas, the new approach at uh, the teaching. So it, it is wonderful to have these differences between these countries and to deal with uh, different realities, even though we are at the same country, uh, at the same continent.
Awesome, thank you. What are, what are some of the things that helped overcome the struggles? You know, did you have interpreters to help with the different languages, or was it something that you just kind of all got through together? Um, because that there were enough people there that knew languages. Well, actually, all of them they speak in English. So the kind of a universal language is English, but they all have also tribal languages and um, others, uh, other national languages. But uh, we use only English at the classes and at school. Actually, at uh, the middle um, high school and at the university, they they all use in English not other language, not local language. So it's easy for us at least to try to talk to them at the same language. Wonderful. I can see some people are starting to type some questions that are sort of coming in, but until they until they come in, I'm going to sort of keep asking if that's okay. I feel like I'm overtaking your thing. Oh, here's one that's coming. Has there been a difference at all, i.e. a drop in the MMR in any of these countries during the project so far? Not. It is not an, our goal to decrease directly uh, the maternal mortality rate through our project. Our project is to enhance the, the, the teaching uh, through the competence-based education uh, for midwifery, and then through uh, skilled midwives help uh, the, to decrease the maternal mortality rate. So it's not a, a straight goal for us or we, we may not say that we are really improve the maternal mortality rates at these countries. But we hope doing so through our job. But there's no this straight line for that right now, at least right now. Talking about schools, and, and I know for me, I'm working in America right now, the uh, international students have, um, it's kind of a hot topic for, for American students to go international to get experience. Is there some, um, some I don't know, what, I want to say use, but that's not what I mean, that's not the word that I mean. Um, can, can you see a situation where students from countries like America can be useful in, within the scope of this project? Oh, actually not. If I understood correctly, you were asking me about the students to go to these countries to working with, with us in this project. Is that correct? Yes, I, we get a lot of students in our school who want to do work overseas as part of both their students, students experience but also their ongoing midwifery experience. Um, and I was, it, it's a bit of a controversial topic right now uh, as to whether this is an appropriate thing for, for students to be doing or not. And I was interested in whether you felt like it, it is appropriate within this project or it would not be appropriate within this project. Well, actually, uh, we are not working with any students at this project. Um, we are uh, more like a consultant, so we have some background about competence-based uh, uh, midwifery education, and uh, uh, I am aware about this. Uh, it's a controversial issue right now, but at the particular at this project, we are not using any foreign students at Africa. It's just for the midwifery educators and with us from WHO 
um, local leaders, com uh, consultants from the University of uh, uh, like WHO collaboration centers, and um, from Loma Linda University and some international consultants. Uh, but not, we don't have right now any uh, students from the United States or from any other country participating in this project right now. Wonderful, thank you. I see some other people that are typing some questions, so I'll just allow a little bit of time for them to do that. Or alternatively, you can raise your hand and I can give you the microphone if you'd like to speak. Um, and also, uh, I want to ask Dr. Petchons or Sabine Dumbar if they want to share more uh, ideas about the projects or say something more. Uh, maybe you can contribute also. You both have microphones if you'd like to talk. I think you just probably have to um, go up to the top of the screen and make sure that the microphone that's there is green but by clicking on it. Something, uh, something that I want to say is all the sub-Saharan um, African countries, they are looking for uh, a competence-based uh, uh, midwifery education. Usually they are nurse midwife. There's no uh, direct entry for midwifery there right now because they they think that it's important to have um, both knowledge, nurse and um, midwifery, so they don't know how really to implement this. So they are trying, they are struggle to implement this for the, the whole universities and the whole schools of nursing and midwifery. Um, in these different countries. So this project is a, it's a really, um, how can I say, it's, it's really trying to make this difference, helping them, helping government, help, helping the nurse council uh, leaders in to implement it and to transforming the competence education um, based education for for uh, the school of there so we are really being like a consultant helping them to do this so it's sounding like the schools are making their own um uh, plan of education, but your role really is to just uh, help and um, kind of oversee and provide assistance where you need to, is that right? Yes. Okay, awesome. I've got, I can see some questions have come in here. Um, what is the response from the teams you are working with? Are people finding it is making a difference to how they are handling the students? This is from Jinga, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. She's saying there, she is from Uganda and they have direct entry midwifery, but often people want to have both training since they can be in isolated situations and need more knowledge. 
Oh, that's your town. It's a town. <laughs> Just pronounce ginger. I'm so sorry. I'm so. I should. I should be better, but I'm very sorry. Well, it uh, it's not uh, an easy task to change uh, your vision, your ideas, and to adopt uh, a new approach to teaching. So there are different levels of uh, acceptancy uh, between the the sites. Uh, there are some of the sites there they are going further and they are in braces, they are understanding better than others. But it's, uh, it's the same for us. I mean, uh, usually at the school you have uh, students with uh, different levels of uh, knowledge, uh, of acceptance of uh, new ideas. So um, at the end of this project, we will be able to see how it is really working for the teachers and for the new students and how they are being able to incorporate these new ideas and these new approach to the to the teaching on a daily basis so for now we are still implementing you we are still uh, working with the professors there to get confidence, to get uh, start implementing the competence-based uh, midwifery education. So right now we don't have um, yet any uh, reports about how they are um, reaching the students, how they are doing the things uh, in a new way. But we hope that very soon. We hope to have these. Uh, reports very soon. Uh, we have these data, and uh, but we we now we are um, feeling this. There are different levels of acceptance, different levels of uh, using the this new approach, these new ideas. But we hope at the end, all of them will have the same. Uh, level they are all uh, using in the same way at least um, in a in a common level may I say awesome I can see Sabina's typed uh, I'm getting over laryngitis so sh she'll type it has been encouraging to see that the midwives from different sites have formed relationships and are eager to collaborate with each other. That's really interesting to me as well. Can you can you elaborate more on that? Do they so the the groups that you've been working with they're starting to talk to each other and maybe share resources? Do you find they share sim similar? Is it, can, is it similar between the countries, or is it quite different between the countries in terms of how they've set up their curriculum? Yes, uh, they all have uh, different curriculums. So we we are trying to work with all the different types of curriculum that they have um, at these four sites, but they. They are starting having some meetings together, so so they are they they have been able to change uh, to share uh, the uh, reports to to share new ideas to how to implement this uh, competence based midwifery education. So they have this opportunity to to share. Um, the experiences they have been through, and this is very um, wonderful because they can um, have the opportunity to to share these uh, situations, uh, uh, the challenges, situations they have been through. 
so they can learn off each other's experiences and what worked for them and what didn't work for them and that kind of stuff. That mm -hmm. sounds like it should happen much more in uh, throughout everybody, you know, in terms of both in midwifery but also in midwifery education as well. That sounds fantastic. Um, Tara Mete, I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. What are the timelines after implementation will you be able to see results? So I guess from from here on out, what's your kind of timeline looking at? So uh, our final report um, will be by 2019. So we have more uh, at least uh, two years ahead to continue um, following the implementation and look for the results of this project. What kind of measures of results have you got um, coming out of that? Is there, is there something that you're going to, is there a specific measurement that you've got or is it um, a, both sort of a feeling from the teachers as, w as well as a quantitative measure? We are more uh, working in a qualitative uh, data and also we have the gap analysis tool from WHO core competencies that with more uh, quantitative data also, data also. Uh, they measure the how they feel uh, competent about uh, the the topic and how they feel confident to put it in practice. Uh, but the results are more qualitative, and we are seeing that our major challenge is really to change attitudes and behaviors and attitudes, to change values, to change the, to make them moving forward, change the uh, old habits about teaching or about how they value midwifery uh, education. So it, uh, it will be, um, indicators more related to the qualitative uh, data and we have part of it a quantitative data about the gap analysis tool. Wonderful. Um, Monica says the curriculums are usually set by the government Pat saying, we anticipate the hardest change will be in the area of behaviours and attitudes. Knowledge and skill will be the easiest to change. Can you talk some more about that? In terms of behaviour and attitude, are we, are we talking about other medical professionals in the area? Or are we talking about um, uh, people, you know, women and, and uh, consumers of midwifery care? Or, every, or are we talking everyone? Not. We are talking about the midwifery educators um, because uh, for them it's a challenge to change uh, with the resource that they have. They sometimes they maybe they think that it's not possible to change the things uh, the way they are. They were because uh, or they are because. Uh, they have lack of a resource, but it's not true. Uh, it's not true. Um, in reality, we can make a difference. We can make a huge difference um, through education uh, without lots of a resource. So we are facing this challenge and to make them to believe that they can't in they can incorporate this changing without doing uh, or without needing lots of uh, resource. And the government uh, of these countries are really interested in to implement um, competence-based midwifery education. But uh, they just uh, decide which will be the curriculum, but they don't give the government, they don't, usually they don't, the, the government, they don't give to the teacher the, 
the tools how to make the changes in the cheating in the teaching so this is uh, the the it, this is unchallenging for us So if I'm hearing you right there, you just said the government has the resources, but they don't pass it down to the teachers. Is that, did I hear that right? No, no. Good. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking, hang on. <laughs> yeah, the government went, uh, went uh, to, by, by law or by set the curriculum, uh, to every school using a competence-based education. But uh, the government is not. Um, but the government is not given the the um, the way how they can do it. I mean, they <laughs> are demanding from the midwifery educators to change, but they are not um, given to them and how to do it. Uh, right. Or, okay. So they they have to do it by themselves, or right. looking for themselves how to change. So now we are trying to help them to reach this goal to using a competence-based uh, midwifery educator and to give to them the the, the education, the knowledge, the and skills and attitudes to be able to implement really implement that at the classroom. Because something is um, wonderful sometimes at the paper, but it's not ha uh, really happening at the school, at the classroom. So yep. we are trying to help them to make that um, occur at the school, at the classroom, with the students, and improving the quality of midwifery education through this. So that, that makes sense. So, so the government saying, we want it to be different, you, it needs to change, but they're not telling them how to change. That's where you guys come in. You're the ones that are kind of helping them with changing what they're doing in order to meet the curriculum that, that's been set. But that a lot of the times it's the instructors that are kind of feeling a little bit like, uh, I'm not sure we can change, this is how it's always been. Uh, and I know that I fight that, and in, in, even in my school here in here in America, we fight that fairly often too. So I can only imagine what it would be worse with less resources than than what we have, which is plenty. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to yeah. go on and keep reading here. Um, Monica says attitudes affect everyone. If the attitudes of healthcare provider is negative, it affects the willingness of clients to access care. Attitudes on behalf of the clients can also be affected by family and tradition. And Pat saying, in these countries, women have had negative experiences with the care by midwives and don't want to go to the SBAs for care. That's um, um, birth attendants. Remind me what the yes. first word is. Skilled birth attendants. Um, yes. This can off. This is often related to cultural and traditional practices. Midwifery educators admit that their role models have not always demonstrated caring attitudes towards women giving birth, and this is hard to change. So the question is, how much training, or are we talking midwives? So I'm thinking, well, yeah, what, what is the length of the training for the midwives? Well, as I said before, um, usually they, they first they, they take it on two or three years uh, to be a nurse, and then more two years to be a midwife. One to one to uh, one to two years to be a midwife. So it takes like um, five years to be a midwife, but they are not a bachelor degree. Um, they they say they are uh, what is the right word for that? License, but it's not a bachelor degree. To, to get a bachelor degree, they have to go to university, and, and uh, there are few at uh, the countries. So they are nurse, uh, three, two or three years previously as a nurse, and then one to two years to be a midwife. 
And is there any training here that's directed towards the birth attendants rather than the midwives? Uh, not that I know. Not that I'm aware. Um, only they have doctors, uh, obstetricians, and uh, they have the nurse midwife to attending the birth. I don't know if you have uh, any TBA, traditional attending of birth there. Probably they have also. But uh, when we are talking, we are talking about the skilled birth attendant. Awesome. Okay, we've got comments. Five years is a long time. And Pat's saying in many countries they are RNs first and then registered midwives, for example, in Botswana. Uh, do they have a direct training or is it post-basic midwifery? So, so are, are all of them nurses first or is there any direct entry midwifery training? Uh, as far as I know, for these countries that we are working in, uh, only false basic midwifery, not direct entry. Awesome. I can see there's uh, lots of people typing right now, so I'm just going to give time and space for the stuff to come through. There's a question, no, the they don't the combine the training, they don't do, do, do they do both together? No, uh, uh, now they, they go just uh, first for the nursing school and then take the midwifery course. It's not, they, they are not combined. Wonderful. I think there's a comment coming through from, uh, from Pat. The programs we are working with do not have direct entry. WHO uses the term SBA to refer to all levels of health professionals who provide birthing assistance. Wonderful. Okay, is there any final questions or any any other topics that um, people would like to discuss or address? Well, Lisa, I want to say thank you very much for your presentation and for all the work that, that you and your whole team are doing. Um, I found it fascinating and I think that it would be um, such a challenge to be working with different countries and, and um, trying to come together to create solutions that work for everybody. Obviously not the same solution, but solutions that still, that still go ahead and work for everyone. So thank you for your presentation and for, for being here. Um, at the, at the Day of the Midwife, and Happy Day of the Midwife to you. I'm going to turn off the recording button now.